Welcome guys, so how you doing, hope you all are doing great, so in this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto was the high school DXD of the 5 dragons movie this is part 1 and if you want more of this then like this video and check tree link for more, so let's get into video. And, and today Sona refused to play at all with me no matter what I said, even though I went all the way to her house, she is always so serious it's no fun. A golden dragon hummed hearing the rant from his little companion who was running her mouth sitting comfortably on top of his head with an angry cute pout on her face crossing her arms under her chest which was quite large for someone her age. The dragon in question had heard this same rant a good amount of times since it wasn't the first time it happened. The girl was pretty small probably because she was a seven-year-old, with beautiful long crimson hair that reached down to her thighs with a single hair stand to stick out which he liked to call her idiot hair charm. She had a lot of loose bangs covering her forehead with side bangs framing her face with beautiful blue eyes and white skin she was wearing a pink blouse with a black skirt and white long socks with a pair of brown shoe. She also happens to be the only sister of the current Lucifer and the heir of the Gremory clan a prestigious devil clan with a great amount of influence in the underworld. Nay, Saul Sama don't you think she is being really mean to me? Hum, it sounds to me like this friend of yours needs to learn how to relax the dragon said telepathically so he wouldn't disturb the comfortable position that both of them found themselves in. The dragon is known as Saul or at least that's what Rias Gremory decided to name him. Was formerly known as Naruto Uzumaki as a majestic huge western dragon with beautiful golden scales that faded into purple during the day while in the night they turned dark blue and purple scales. His scales were beautiful enough that even a single one of them could be considered an invaluable treasure as they looked like they were made from the stars themselves with heterochromia slitted eyes with his right eye being bright blue and his left one being dark purple. He was huge in size reaching the 3377, 62 feet tall. Making him the biggest dragon in all history as he is two times bigger than the world serpent and ten times bigger than Great Red. No matter what dragon form he took he still retained the same height though he was able to change his size whenever he wanted so he could basically have whatever side he wished like right now he had changed his size to much smaller form that could barely be any bigger than a regular house he did this so that he could hear Rhea's voice without having her screaming in his ear. He still had his original powers or at least a great amount of them but instead of having to use chakra he used magic since his body didn't possess any chakra now almost like whatever deity that reincarnated him converted his chakra into magic along with giving him a huge boost. Even though it has been a few years since he was reincarnated he had mostly kept himself hidden in the underworld, he had no desire in getting involved with other beings affairs since he was comfortable living a peaceful life free of hardships and stress, thankfully Rias decided to keep his existence a secret. He also loves his naps, from what few he learned he could be considered one of the strongest existences in all history thanks to what Rias told him with her limited knowledge as a devil, he was what others would call the pinnacle of being a dragon with only two others having the same status as him as a dragon god and while he had yet to meet them personally he was sure they were going to be a pain in the ass not to mention he was comfortable with his current life. The only reason no one knew about his location was thanks to the fact that he had a barrier that denied anyone but Rias or him to enter and leave the area, it was quite far from the devil civilization so he was quite comfortable without having a single devil bothering him. He really doesn't understand why he was reborn as a dragon and he doubts he would ever find an answer to it but he wouldn't say that his current life was bad right now and thanks to Rias his life wasn't that lonely. Talking about the little girl resting on top of his head, he met her a year ago when she teleported herself into his domain by mistake after having a breakdown and fight with her parents who decided to engage her with what he would dare say is an asshole which totally made no sense as to why would a parent try to marry their child to someone they clearly don't like and aren't fond of. Weren't parents supposed to always put the happiness of their child over everything else? Right. Rias for her part just grinned happy that someone finally agreed with her. Why not try to play with your other people if this Sona is always like that? Naruto couldn't help but ask wondering why did she keep trying to play with that girl if she didn't show any interest in playing. T that's because, Onitama barely drops by and my peerage is always busy training so I don't have anyone to play with, Rias said with a sad tone earning a sigh from him using his tail to pat her head. Don't be sad Rias, just be patient and I am sure they will play with you, Naruto said rubbing his tail against her cheek earning a giggle from the girl. You are always so nice to me Sal Sama, Rias said pulling down his tail so she could rub her cheek on it with a relaxed expression on her face muttering the next part which earned a sigh from him, wished my parents were like that. Rias, I know that you were upset with your parents but I am sure that they still love you. Then why did they decide to just engage me to a pig like him? If they loved me they would consider my feelings instead of just expecting me to meet their expectations. I want to choose who to marry and be my own persona instead of letting others tell me what to do. 
Rias yelled with tears streaming down her eyes clenching her tiny fists so hard that her knuckles turned white. She always did her best to be a good girl in her parents' eyes, always obeying even when she wanted to do otherwise, never giving problems to anyone around her, always making sure to stay as humble as a noble could be, never boasting that her brother was the strongest Satan. She was a good girl, yet why did it feel like the world and her own family hates her, even though she did her best to be a good girl for her parents and her family? She was angry, no, saying she was angry was putting it nicely, she was livid that her father was promising her a way to marry someone else without even asking her first, like she was just a possession that could be given away just to make their families better, she was not only being stripped of her dreams, she was being stripped of her freedom to the only person she hates. Was it all lies? When did they say they cared about her and her feelings? Was it a lie when they said they love her? What was the point of being the younger brother of the strongest devil in the world if she was going to lose her freedom? She was more than upset, she was feeling heartbroken beyond belief, betrayed that her own family didn't care about her at all. Her dream was to marry the love of her life living happily ever after just like those princesses in stories that her parents used to tell her before bed, she was technically a princess of the underworld seen as her brother holds the title of Lucifer and the leader of the four Satans, she was also the princess of the Gremory clan. But now her was impossible to archive thanks to her parents who didn't seem to care at all how they destroyed her hopes and dreams. Then just don't, he said grabbing her by the back of her blouse bringing her face to face with him as he lifted his head to rest it on the palm of his hand yawning loudly, she only looked at him with her eyes wide open looking at him with her teary blue eyes. Just because they are your parents it doesn't mean they can control your life. You aren't forced to meet their expectations, take me for example just learn how to live your life to your heart's content and relax, they are probably just afraid of losing control over you because you are the only heir of the family since your brother is your current Lucifer, Naruto explained to her what he believes is the reason behind why were they doing this while also giving her some life advice for the future. B but how can I escape my destiny? I don't know what to do to escape this marriage, Rhea said with a small voice getting a sigh from him. You are too young to be talking about such things you know. Besides if you don't like your destiny of fate then grow the courage to fight it back and change it to something you want it to be, Naruto said rubbing his nose against her stomach earning some giggles from her. He didn't mention that he wasn't going to allow his only friend in this world to suffer and become the woman of an asshole like this riser guy, he had marked her a while ago leaving a sun seal on her right hand which was hidden with the help of magic when the time came he would know when she needed his help to break the marriage contract. He would never leave his friends down, he didn't tell her anything about it because he wanted her to grow as a person or would it be a devil in this case. He didn't want to grab her by the hand through everything or else she wouldn't learn anything about life and the last thing he wanted was for his only friend to become a brat. Do you think I can do it? Rias asked looking down at the ground. If it's you Rias then you can do anything you put your mind into, Naruto said chuckling placing her on the floor resuming his previous position by placing his head over the back of his claw. He did raise an eyebrow at her when he saw that she went completely silent looking down at the ground with her body trembling. I love you Sal Sama. Rias yelled all of the sudden jumping on his face showering his cheek with kisses much to his dismay. Oh oi. Stop that you brat you are getting me full of your disgusting spit. Naruto yelled not knowing what to do to get the girl off him without hurting her. Nope. Rias said kissing his cheek full of scales not caring one bit as she let her best friend know how much she loved him. Ah. Damn it. I am going to smell like brat spit for the next days now. Do you know how hard it is to keep these scales clean? Truly a beautiful friendship between a dragon and a devil princess. Eventually as years passed the two of them stopped seeing each other as often since Rias had her duties as a devil, until one day she was unable to visit for a few years since she was sent to the human world not without saying her goodbyes to him since she wouldn't be able to see him for a while, when this happened Naruto had put himself through a deep slumber that lasted for years and it would have stayed that way until Rias visited him. At least that's how it was supposed to be like until the seal he gave her activated one day when she needed him the most. To say that Rias Gremory was a mess right now was an understatement. She was not well both physically and emotionally, and with each passing day, she found herself feeling worse. Over the years Rias Gremory turned into a gorgeous and beautiful teen as the years were kind to her giving her a buxom figure with a decent height of 58 making her quite tall for her age, she was currently coursing her third year in high school that her father owns, her attending school was more of an excuse to get herself some more time before she was forced to marry her bastard of a fiancé riser Phoenix the most disgusting being she had the displeasure of meeting and being promised to. She would dare say that even being promised to a slime monster would be thousands of times better than riser. She was never able to overcome her anger at her parents for promising her to that bastard who happened to be one of the sons of the Phoenix clan. 
who were known for their powerful regenerative abilities and their power over the fire, a clan that was part of the remaining 72 families, she wasn't stupid as she knew that this marriage was because they wanted to unite their unique family's powers to create a stronger generation of pure-blooded devils one that had the power of the phoenix and the power of destruction that she possesses. Unlike Riser, she had no experience in raiding games as she had never fought in one of them the most experience they had was them fighting against stray devils and the occasional sparring sessions. She just had five members in her peerage with one of them being unable to fight while the other had zero potential to fight as she was more of a support element, she had no chance at all against Riser's complete peerage who were fully experienced in raiding games and were more experienced fighting real battles than her own peerage. She was supposed to have more time to get ready for her plan but luck wasn't on her side as Riser decided to push ahead the date of the weeding way earlier than what they agreed which made her unable to get fully prepared for the raiding game that was supposed to save her from the hands of fate. She was stupid for thinking that he would wait patiently seen as she had requested to move the date after she was done with school which included college in that list as she wanted to have all the time possible to get her peerage strong enough to challenge him to a rating game. Sadly she was forced to challenge him way earlier than expected and she lost. Her loss was inevitable, there was nothing she could be done as she had lost in every single aspect, strategy, power, experience, numbers, her facing him on a rating game right now was pretty much suicide but she didn't want to go without a fight. The fact that they were even able to put up a decent fight was a miracle in itself. With a sigh, she looked at herself in the expensive mirror in front of her and she couldn't help but feel disgusted at her dress with a frown adorning her beautiful and flawless face, one that her fiancé picked for her for the engagement party but it was obviously picked with full intentions of getting under her skin because the dress looked like a wedding dress. She wanted nothing more than to rip that dress off herself, she didn't give a crap if she was seen naked she wanted nothing more than to get rid of this dress. Before she knew it she had clenched her first to the point her knuckles went white and blood was coming out of the palm of her hand thanks to how hard she dug her nails. Ria Sama, are you ready? It's time, a female voice said pulling her out of her glaring and look at the person who was calling for her, she was nearly tempted to glare again when she saw it was none other than the sister of that pig. Let's get going. Ria said not sparing a look in Raven Fennec's way leaving the room with a frown on her face earning a sigh from the younger girl who understood why was she acting like this. Ravel Fenix the youngest child of the Fenix clan is a gorgeous young girl with dark blue eyes. Just like the rest of her family she had blonde hair which in her case was a shade lighter than her brother with her hair tied into twin tails with large drill-like curls using thin red scrunchies to hold them in place, the front of her hair had several bangs hanging over her forehead with a V-shaped fringe hanging over the bridge of her nose along with a beautiful dark purple dress and with matching gloves and a matching fan along with black boots. She understood perfectly why was Rias upset right now and she was just as upset, well probably not as much as Rias but she was still upset that her brother did something as dirty as to accept a challenge he was going to win yes or yes. Her brother abused the fact that Rias Gremory didn't have any experience when it came to rating game while her brother had a lot of advantage thanks to the many rating games he had participated in one one would even call him a genius with his strategies and wins behind his back not to mention that it was impossible for him to lose against Rias since he gave everyone his strongest pieces some Fenix tears. She was frankly disappointed that her brother didn't fight fair and square. Not to mention that she could see the less than pleasant plans he had for Rias and her peerage which consisted mostly of females, hell, she was sure that if it wasn't because her parents and her brother Ruval would kill Riser if he puts a hand on her and she wasn't sure herself when would that even happen because she had seen the looks he gave her not to mention he only added her in his peerage or harem because he wanted to brag he had a complete harem of girls. She was embarrassed she had such a brother but sadly she couldn't do anything because he was her king, with a sigh she followed behind Rias not saying a single thing feeling bad for the Gremory heir, she was going to try to distract herself by talking to the other members of her brother's peerage. I am sorry. Saul Sama, in the end, I was too weak to fight against my own fate, I hope you can forgive me, Rias thought being forced to bite her bottom lip doing her best to put her emotions under control not fully trusting her voice right now, not noticing a single tear fell from her eyes, knowing she had failed the only one who always believed in her. If she paid attention she would have seen that a golden seal appeared on her hand glowing for a second before vanishing. Somewhere else a pair of huge heterochromia slitted eyes shot open at the same time the seal on Rias Gremory glowed, followed by a powerful rumble as the beast got up from its position which was soon followed by a strong gust of wind that appeared as soon as a pair of wings unfolded themselves and gave an equally powerful flap of its wings sending a huge part of the forest flying around. The same owner of the heterochromia eyes summoned a giant black seal that gave off a red glow in front of itself the seal was several times bigger than the beast itself, look up Ellsworth Solace Magic Circle on Google Pictures. 
The beast flew through the seal and as soon as it did it changed its size to something gigantic making its previous size which was barely any bigger than a regular house look small and insignificant as its new size easily towered over mountains by several times. With the beast gaining a much thinner form almost serpentine like with a pair of huge wings that easily could cover several mountains from plain view if one looked from the distance it was almost like the stars and space itself were one with the beast as their light and darkness shone brightly on its skin. On the ballroom in the Phoenix residence we can find several devils of different households were reunited wearing expensive suits and dresses of all kinds and colors some talking among themselves while others were calmly enjoying the many drinks and food that the family was offering or in some cases they were trying to gain a favor from another household to increase their influence and power. However, no one stood out the most than Rias Gremery's peerage. The first and probably who stood out the most earning the attention of several males and females by her beauty was someone around the same height and age as Rias having long black hair that was tied into a long ponytail that reached all the way to her legs with two strands of hair sticking out from the top sloping backwards with an orange ribbon keeping her hair in place to add she had equally beautiful violet eyes and flawless white skin. Out of everyone she had a really unique dress consisting of a black kimono tied with a white and gold obi with white being the main color. Surprisingly it did a great job in hiding her voluptuous figure as much as possible removing the usual seductive look from her. Next to her was a petite girl with snow white hair that has two long bangs going past her shoulders with several loose bangs hanging over her forehead with the back cut in a short bob with hazel eyes to match though if you looked really carefully you could see a small slit on the center of her eyes. Unlike the black haired beauty, she was wearing a pink dress with pink gloves a few shades lighter than her dress with matching shoes along with a black cat shaped hair clip on both sides of her hair. Last but not least we had one of the two males in the group who was a handsome young man with short blonde hair. That was pulled all the way back with several bangs of hair out mainly on his right side giving him a more handsome look than his original hairstyle. With bluish gray eyes along with a mole underneath his left eye. Unlike the females, he was wearing a standard suit that was more modern than most of the suits the male devils are wearing, there were more members missing but they couldn't assist the wedding scene as one of them refused to come out of his room while the other one felt a little uneasy visiting the underworld thanks to the fact that she was a former nun. All three of them had their heads down in shame with the fresh memory of failure in their minds knowing exactly that they had failed their king when she needed them the most, just being in this very same room was like adding salt to the wound. They had tried their hardest to win for their king going as far as to push themselves to the limit just for the sake of saving their king from the hands of that man but they had limits as to how much they could do. They were just strongest, more organized, they had better teamwork than them, the difference in experience and power was too much for them, Rias would never blame any of them for losing because she loved and cared about them a lot, they were like family to her if anything she was probably blaming herself for losing. Sona Citri one of Rhea's friends had tried to comfort them as much as possible in her own way but it had little to no effect as the wounds left in them were too deep for her to heal. It didn't take long before a giant ring of flames appeared in front of everyone forcing everyone to focus their complete attention on the responsible which turned out to be Riser Phoenix who had a twisted grin on his face probably due to the fact that he had won the rating game. Famed nobles of the underworld, today the Phoenix family is honored and thankful to have your presence here. You were all invited today so we can all share the historic moment that will not be forgotten by the future generations of devils in which I, Riser Phoenix and the heiress of the Gremory family, Rias Gremory, would like to formally announce our intent to marry each other fully intending on creating a union between our families. I would like you all to meet my empress, Rias Gremory. As soon as Riser Phoenix said this a red magical symbol of the Gremory clan appeared where Riser was pointing and from said magical symbol Rias appeared from it with her eyes closed having the same frown on her face that refused to leave her face. As soon as she was shown all the devils in the room started clapping their hands cheering for the future of the new couple as it would give more power to the devils if such a powerful union was made. This seemed to do the thing as the mood in the room went up and everyone was more than ready to start celebrating for the union of the couple. This only made Rias close her eyes clenching her fists wishing they understood how she felt, how she hated the fact that she was being forced against her own will to marry someone who didn't love her and only saw her as a sexual toy. She wanted them to feel her despair, the same pain she was going through, that she wanted someone, anyone to save her. Now that we got that out of the way I would like to announce the date of our wedding which will be held a few. Saul Sama, save me, and that's when it happened. Ah. Rias screamed in horrible pain collapsing to her knees holding her right hand, she felt her body burn like it was being lit on fire from the inside she didn't notice it but her body was being covered in her red devil aura it was like her body was going to explode right now like she was being filled to the brim by huge amounts of magic more than her own body could handle. Rias, Bucko. Rias peerage, family, and friend Sona ran in her direction when they saw this happening. 
This was followed by the whole place started shaking with the mark on her hand glowing stronger than before. Forcing more than one to support themselves against nearby tables, walls or support each other in the earthquake that was happening right now, it wasn't long before the roof was ripped off the building or more like the whole upper part of the building was ripped away almost as if it was being sucked by a black hole which was soon followed by a powerful gust of wind that ended up sending nearly every single devil flying through the ballroom. What is going on? Ravel Fenix yelled holding on to her brother's queen like her life depended on it not trusting herself to keep herself in place. This was the same case for several other devils who were using all their power to hold their place and not end up crashing against the nearby wall. They watched in complete shock as the sky was lit up by a bright light which was followed by several huge fireballs that could be easily mistaken with meteorites fall from the sky with some of them passing over them hitting a nearby forest lighting it up in fire. None of the fireballs impacted any building of the Phoenix territory but some of them landed in the gardens or too close to the buildings for comfort. My, quite the party you mortals have right now. A powerful and loud voice said in a joking manner resonating so deep that they could hear the echo of the voice inside of their heads, it wasn't long before they were forced to look up at the sky in a mixture of wonder, fear, awe forcing more than one two fall to their knees in shock. Much to their growing horror and relief they saw a star fall down before going back up in a huge curve passing way too close for comfort almost as if it was rotating around something. And that something revealed itself when they saw the darkness of the night and the stars themselves move on their own with the very same meteor being on top of the shifting cosmos and that's when true horror started for them as they saw what could be similar to a claw made out of stars and space which was only visible thanks to the light the star had. The hand wasn't alone, not far from the hand a face was revealed, the face of a dragon. A face Rias knew more than anyone else in the world, as soon as the pain went away she looked at the sky Rias found herself staring at the sky with her eyes watering with a look pure happiness and hope appearing in her beautiful blue eyes. S. Sol Sama. Rias whispered looking at the sky with her heart being filled up with hope, there was no mistaking the voice, the appearance there was only one dragon that could fit such characteristics. The first one to overcome his shock was Riser Phoenix, who glared heatedly at the being hovering over them with his mind been clouded by his anger and hatred ignoring his own instincts that were telling him to run away. You. Who do you think you are not only destroying this moment but also destroying the property of the Phoenix Claw? Rage and arrogance. Cute and hilariously generic, Naruto said in an amused tone followed by a powerful laugh that resounded through the whole underworld. It has been a while since he used his astral form where he lost his physical body ascending into something else a weird mixture of magic and something else if anything it was somewhat similar to the form he had when he used Kurama's chakra but in this case it felt like it went beyond that. His eyes shifted from him to Rias who managed to stand up looking at him with a beautiful smile on her face, my. If it isn't Little Red. Or should I call you Big Red now? I it really is you Saul Sama? Rias asked earning a chuckle from the dragon. I doubt any dragon looks as good as I do, don't you agree? Naruto said waving his hands around created several fireballs which later started rotating around themselves before snapping his fingers creating a huge pair of sunglasses. That he put over the bridge of his nose this earned himself a giggle from Rias who was whipping away the tears from her eyes. Same old dragon she remembers, what the hell is going on, Sona thought with a dull look on her face, she wasn't the only one as other devils had similar thoughts running through their head, this didn't seem to stop some of the nobles and familiars who were pretty upset with what happened and weren't afraid of yelling their thoughts with panic, anger and more shown on their faces. Lady Rias, what is the meaning of this? Is this your doing Rias? It must be. After all, they seem to be on friendly terms. How are you planning on paying for the damage? We demand that the Gremory clan pays some kind of compensation for everyone. Shut up you bunch of idiots. Can't you be quiet for a little bit? I am trying to have a conversation here. Naruto yelled feeling several thick marks appear on his forehead incredibly annoyed that his reunion with Rias was ruined thanks to these people yelling stupid things, his voice successfully shut everyone up as it sent a powerful shockwave that forced everyone to cover their ears. His voice was already loud when he was talking normally so his yell was really loud to the point that several windows and multiple crystals around the area exploded. He could only sigh letting go of his annoyance, this was not the kind of reunion he was expecting but he supposed it was better than not meeting his only friend if she didn't need his help right now he would have probably been sleeping right now meditating and training inside his mindscape. He would rather not have anything to do with these devils since they were complicated and annoying to deal with based on what he knew about nobles and what few things he heard from Rias. Not to mention dealing with nobles was a huge waste of his time but as soon as it involved Rias he had no other choice but to show his presence to the world which would probably get in the way of his relaxing time. He could only hope his naps could be saved, what an interesting turn of events. 
Another voice said this time belonging to a tall man who appeared to be on his twenties with shoulder-length crimson red hair and blue-green eyes along with a matching handsome face. If he had to say so himself it was like seeing a male version of Rias if anything if his memory didn't fail him this should be either Rias' brother or her father since she mentioned that all three of them shared the same hair color but he guessed it was probably the former since he couldn't sense any hostility from Rias towards the man. The man was visibly tense with a forced smile on his face probably due to the fact that he was aware of the power the being in front of them held probably thanks to the fact that he was more experienced than the rest of devils around him, a being whose power he didn't know if he could defy even in his strongest form. Oh Oni-sama? Oh, so you are the famous Onitama Rias always talked about, Naruto said with a raised eyebrow making said girl choke on air when he said that part as an atomic blush made its way to her face. Sal-sama. Rias yelled shocked and scandalized that he just said something like that in front of multiple nobles, her friend, her peerage and her brother of all people. Era. Era are really? Sirzek asked with a stupid happy smile making its way to his face the same kind of smile a man would have when they realized they could die right now without any regrets. UMU. There wasn't a single day she didn't talk about you never thought I would meet you if I do say so myself, Naruto said honestly making the man giggle in what he assumed was happiness and joy. Someone kill me already, Rias lamented holding her head between her arms refusing to face anyone as her face was burning with shame and embarrassment. Much to her relief salvation came in the form of her brother's queen who quickly went to her brother's side and pinched his cheek to make him regain control over himself. Sirzek Sama. May I remind you that this dragon you are so calmly chatting with is also the responsible for the mass destruction of several parts of the underworld. The silver-haired maid said pinching his cheek making the man start crying at the painful hold his queen had over his cheek making everyone including Naruto to sweat drop being instantly reminded of Jiraiya and Tsunade. The woman was quite beautiful if he said so himself she was probably around the same age range as the red-haired man who was currently crying trying his best to free himself from the iron grip she had on him. The woman has dark silver hair that flows all the way down to her back with a long braid on each side that had small blue bows at the ends with the rest being let down ending in twin braids, with matching silver eyes and red lipstick? It was hard to tell from this distance, the woman was wearing what he would like to call a standard maid outfit being mostly white and blue with long sleeves and a white maid headband? I apologize for my king, Saul Sama was it. He tends to get ahead of himself when he relaxes, Grafia said bowing her head deeply at him in respect. Just like her king she was incredibly tense because she could feel the power flowing from him in waves that she was sure that she would oppose zero to no thread to him his earlier demonstration of power was more than enough for her to believe that neither her king or herself would be a danger to him. He showed mercy by not destroying their city, she wasn't sure how the sister of her king managed to befriend such a monster but she wasn't going to piss him off anytime soon, and it did help that the mean was intelligent and capable of speech, unlike most dragons. If I may ask Saul Sama, what business do you have with us devils? Grafia asked as respectfully as possible glaring at anyone who tried to voice their protest and being successful in doing so using her title as the strongest queen to her advantage. Oh. I nearly forgot that, Naruto said snapping his fingers remembering just why was he here in the first place, but first let me take a much more comfortable form so we can talk like civilized people. As soon as he said this he breathed in the cold night air before letting it go letting out atoms escape his mouth into the environment that quickly started surrounding his body with a silent command as beautiful particles of cosmic magic appeared giving his gigantic a new shape this was the first time using this spell seen as he mostly just changed his draconic form between eastern and western or he just changed his size to whatever he wanted as long as it was smaller than his true form. During the process he felt his body get more and more constrained until his astral form changed to a physical one of 59 anyone who was looked would have assumed he had just disappeared but he was just slowly ascending to the ground. He had used this form before twice with this one being the third time and he had to say he didn't dislike it but he couldn't help but miss his previous look. Instead of the bright blonde hair he used to have he now had golden blonde hair that was spiked downwards in all directions that could shine like the sun and looked like it was set aflame in golden red and orange fire that had the shine of the stars in it, he also had his purple and blue slitted eyes but the sclera of his eye turned black whenever he used his dragon powers, his skin had turned white instead of the peach skin he possessed he did dislike this fact as he had lost one of the many traits he shared with his father. Surprisingly his features didn't change in his human form unlike his dragon form where his scales change color, he guessed it was probably because his dragon form was a constantly shifting cosmos of its own while his human form was more static in a way. Unlike the first time he transformed he was wearing clothes with them consisting of a pair of black pants and a red coat that had his magic seal in the back with black armored gauntlets that didn't cover his hands showing black fingerless gloves. 
He was barefoot but that was mostly because he rarely touched the ground when he took this form, what probably got everyone's attention when he landed on the ground of the Phoenix Ballroom was that he had a pair of huge golden dragon wings with a pair of horns on top of his head and a long golden pointed dragon tail, if you want a better idea on the clothes just check for Perkizas or Perkizas Phase 3 in Google Pictures. Ah, the joy of walking with humanoid feet is quite refreshing if I do say so myself. Naruto said rolling his shoulders he always felt quite his body get quite stiff when he changed to his human form probably because his body wasn't as good as his dragon form. This seemed to pull every one of their staring as they glanced his way not believing that the dragon they saw moments ago turned into a humanoid dragon and a handsome one at that, a great part of the females are blushing staring at his face and body, it was also thanks to this new appearance that the females were starting to feel attracted to him when they felt the power coming off him. Devils were attracted to power after all. Why you had a form like that, Rias couldn't help but ask looking at him in shock with a light blush adorning her cheeks as she didn't expect him to look of the same age as her and be handsome too, this, of course, earned her a raised eyebrow from him. I am pretty sure I told you before I could change my form at will, Naruto said putting a hand on his hip looking at her weirdly as he could have sworn he told her long ago that he could change this. B but I didn't know you could turn into a human dragon as well, Rias said walking up to him so she could study his form, and you never transformed into this before either. Naruto just shrugged since he didn't feel like telling her that the only reason as to why he didn't transform was because he could relax a lot more when he was in his dragon form, or that the first time he transformed he was butt naked. No way in hell he was showing himself naked around a girl who was seven years old. Saul A? I believe I haven't introduced myself, I am Sirzek Lucifer one of the satans in the underworld but I am sure you already know that thanks to my little sister, the red-haired male said rubbing his red cheek finally freeing himself from the iron grip of his maid, the maid next to me is Graphia Lucifuge, my personal maid. Aurelian Saul, as Little Red decided to name me though she usually calls me Saul only, Naruto said remembering the time he befriended her and she had decided to name him like one would with a puppy, the only reason he allowed it was because the girl was stubborn as hell and it was quite the exotic name too which describes his dragon forms perfectly. Totally not because the girl was incredibly cute when she pouts. Yeah. Then would you mind following me? I would like to converse privately with you. Sirzek said sending a look in Rias and Greyfi's way and they would have left the building if it wasn't because of something Naruto said. I am sorry but I don't swing that way, Naruto said crossing his arms in front of himself making a perfect X which made everyone face plant, no one face planted harder than Sirzek though. He was basically calling him gay, I, I didn't mean it that way. I just want to talk, the current holder of the Lucifer title yelled earning a grin from Naruto who just chuckled but made no move follow them as he snapped his fingers using his celestial magic to restore all the damage he did to the Phoenix residents and other places. No reason to leave everything destroyed if he already made a statement of who is, without doubt, the strongest right now. I am sorry but I am good where I am right now besides I have unfinished business, Naruto said with a smirk on his face turning around or to be more exact he turned in Riser's direction. When Naruto said this he made the whole room went completely silent as he had shocked everyone by his crazy demand, the fact that a being as powerful as him that could easily destroy the underworld in a matter of minutes or seconds just came all the way here while nearly causing the whole destruction of the underworld with a spectacular show of meteors while also leaving destruction in his path came all the way to this very place just to ask for the engagement to be cancelled of all things. Everyone tensed and gulped unconsciously at this, some went as far as to faint thanks to the shock while others had a hard time believing what they just heard. Hum. Was I not clear enough? Maybe I said it the wrong way, it's been a while since I had some interaction with mortals after all, Naruto muttered in an elegant and cool tone grabbing his chin in what everyone assumed was a thinking pose which he held for a few seconds before he nodded to himself in satisfaction and crossed his arms in front of himself, then he'll try again. Listen well mortals as this is the only time I shall repeat myself so make sure you listen carefully you wretched pile of bones and flesh, I demand no. I am ordering you fools to stop this engagement and give Rias Gremory her freedom back or else everything created shall crumble when I unleash my starfire upon the underworld. You can beg for mercy or hide behind your walls and towers but nothing shall save you from my wrath if you decide to keep this foolish act of pride and selfishness. As soon as he was done his body was covered in a powerful and heavy aura that looked like it was made from starfire and they were lucky enough that it wasn't his actual fire or else they would have started hallucinating thanks to the intense heat his celestial flames created. This, however, still had the effect of crushing everyone but Sirzek and Graphia with his aura successfully forcing everyone to kiss the ground with the weaker devils not even having a chance to see any of this as they were instantly knocked out by his aura of power while the few who were awake were struggling to breathe or in their knees in some cases being completely unable to move a single muscle. 
even Searzex and Graphia were sweating and gulping at the sudden pressure that was starting to make their knees wobble. The only ones lucky enough to be completely unaffected by this were Rias and her peerage who were able to stand perfectly with no problems at all thanks to the mark on Rias' hand that was glowing a bright golden, he guessed her peerage were okay because they shared her devil essence thanks to the evil pieces which made the mark protect them. Riser who was on his knees with his head bowing was glaring at the ground thanks to the fact that he was unable to look up. D do you really, Ku? T think I would say yes? J just like that, you insulin. Who said you had a choice? Naruto told him making him completely freeze with his eyes opening as wide as possible in fear when he heard the tone of his voice, he was completely sure that if he could move he would have taken a step back in fear as the man no, the monster standing in front of him had completely robbed him of the ability to talk with pure intimidation. He was then forced to kiss the ground when the pressure increased even more when Naruto glared in his direction with killing intent leaving in waves if he had been able to look up he would have noticed that Naruto only had lifted one single finger which was more than enough to crack all the walls in the room very much like the second Hokage did with Sasuke. Instead of sending everything and everyone away like he had seen in Sasuke's memories he was just using his magic power to force them to the ground, both of them shared their memories and feelings during their last fight. Why you can't just decide something like that? This marriage is to strengthen the devil race and. You fools honestly think I would care about your race. Either you are incredibly stupid or delusional if you think I would care about the mass extinction of a race that isn't my own, Naruto said with a raised eyebrow interrupting a high-ranking devil who decided to speak up after gathering enough courage. Did they really think a dragon of all things would give a damn about devils? Well, he was just putting an act so it would look more believable. I would go as far as to burn the whole underworld just to save my only friend in the world, Naruto said enjoying the look of shock on their faces, obviously, he didn't really mean it, for the most part, since he wouldn't kill innocents or children. He was human at heart after all. He did mean it when he said he would go as far as to burn the world just to protect her happiness and her dreams, hell, he would turn into a monster just to protect her if needed, she was his only friend in the world and he would give his life for her, he would fight the gods themselves just for her. He would even cast his human heart for her or go as far as to give his life for her. She is his only precious people in the world. Why you wouldn't actually do that, right? Sirzex asked nervously getting a raised eyebrow from Naruto who was looking at him like he was stupid making him drop his head in defeat, you would. This girl can be stubborn as hell, weird, a pervert. And a really damn rude brat, Naruto said with a sigh referring to the times she refused to listen to him whenever she had something in mind or whenever she was upset. Weird because she always talked about whatever this anime was so passionately that it weirded him out, a pervert because the few times she had taken naps with him she always ended up stripping when she fell asleep and didn't seem to be embarrassed or ashamed at all and worst of all rude because she always interrupted his wonderful naps without a single care in the world. All those wonderful naps that he had interrupted because the girl wanted to play. Everyone's sweat dropped when he randomly whipped away a tear from his eye. Well everyone but Rias who looked like she wanted to crawl into a hole while her peerage who were trying their best to hide their amused smiles knowing that everything he said was true in a way. But, Naruto moved so fast that he looked like he teleported and appeared right next to Rias just so he could so he could grab her chin and cheek with his left hand making the girl instantly get tense at the physical contact but she quickly relaxed when she felt the warmth of his hand and smiled with an embarrassed blush, Naruto for his part just gave Riser a feral grin. She is someone worth fighting for and I would be damned if I allowed a bastard like yourself to put his disgusting hands over her," Naruto said extending his massive wings almost as if it was in a protective way to keep everyone away from her if they tried to attack her as it would only fail miserably considering that his wings were extremely durable. This time Rias couldn't control herself and turned around to wrap her arms around him to start openly crying with her face buried on his chest when she heard his words. This is what she wanted all these years, for someone to save her from Riser. Even if she acted tough she was always scared of losing, of not being strong enough to defeat Riser and becoming just another one of Riser's girls, a no-name girl who lost badly against Riser of all people and when she lost her world had crumbled into pieces like a tower of cards. Today her fate was going to change, she had no doubt in her mind that her dearest and most precious friend in the world would save her from the cruel hands of fate. So tell me, Riser Phoenix, what are you going to do? Are you going to keep defying me by keeping this engagement or are you going to save your life? Please cancel the engagement I am already tired of talking like this. Naruto asked with a feral grin hiding the fact that he was pleading inside his mind already sick and tired of having to talk like this. 
he was honestly considering just killing this guy and be done with it, he was already in a bad mood as it is thanks to the idiots that ruined his moment with Rias and to add on top of that he still had to talk like this and he was running out of ideas. Not to mention he was also hungry damn it. I there will be no need for that Aurelian Sama, Sirzek said speaking for the first time since Naruto's bold request, if you looked carefully you could see that he was forcing himself to smile in this situation because unlike the rest of ignorant devils he could see that he was serious with his threats for the most part so he found himself forced to act before things escalated. Just thinking about the paperwork he would need to do if things went out of control made him want to cry. Even if you were Rhea's brother and the current Lucifer don't think ill back out from this, Naruto said glaring at the man making him gulp. No no no, nothing like that, I just want to make a deal with you. Sirzek said as soon as he was the sole victim and target of his glare. Huh? A deal you say? Naruto asked getting more annoyed that people couldn't let him just finish this issue so he could go pick up some food with Rias or by himself he didn't really care. Why yes, I want the two of you to sort it out with a duel, of course, all I ask is that you don't go overboard or go into your dragon form please, Sirzek said weakly, he already witnessed the kind of destruction his mere presence and power could create just by being on his dragonic form and the last thing he wanted was that he was going to be forced to deal with the reparations and the paperwork that came with it. This made Naruto pause as he actually considered the proposition. He could use this as a chance to try out this new body and see what kind of skills he had retained from his dragon form, while it was true that he had used this form a few times before he didn't really use it to fight and if he ever fought anything it was just small and weak creatures he killed with little to no effort like a kick to the head. While he was powerful he hardly trained or used his dragon powers for anything useful other than his own selfish wishes. He knew he could use chakra just as good as before and unlike a human body, he didn't have to worry about him getting rusty or worry about his chakra paths like normal ninjas would. Sure. Why the hell not? Naruto said letting out a feral grin lifting his right hand making a claw gesture all while looking down on Riser who felt a chill run down his back as soon as the eyes of a true predator fell on him, however. Fighting him alone would be boring so tell him he can bring his peerage or whatever the hell the idiot that created the system called it. Ha. Huh. Take that Ajuka. I knew I wasn't the only one who thought it was stupid well then it's decided. Sirzex exclaimed hiding his real thoughts before giving the phoenix an apologetic smile doing his best to hide his true emotions. Sorry, Riser Kun but you will need to face him, of course, unless you decided to not fight and just give up the hand of my sister. TTCH. I don't like it but since it's you who is asking Lucifer Sama then I have no choice but to accept, Riser said taking a deep breath to calm down his emotions and not answer the strongest devil in his leader in an offensive way, he wasn't stupid enough to anger Sears ex Lucifer. Yet he was stupid enough to fight a dragon god, great. Then I shall prepare a fitting stage for the two of you. Was it everyone's imagination or did he sound a bit too happy about this? Oi brat. How long do you plan on keep hugging me? Naruto yelled in a separate room trying and failing miserably to get Rias off him by trying, not really, to remove her arms that were around his body in a tight grip. Don't wanna. Rias said stubbornly hugging him even tighter much to the amusement of everyone watching. I don't care you don't want to, I am telling you to get off. Naruto said again pushing her face away from when he felt her rub her face on his stomach. No. Gah. Ufufu, never knew Bucko could be just as childish as Lucifer Sama. Akano said covering her mouth with the sleeves of her kimono hiding the amused smile she had on her face, though even without hiding it you could see the amused shine in her eyes. Everyone else couldn't help but sweat drop at that and said sweat drop increased when Rias managed to somehow take him down with her putting both of them on the ground with the dragon god still attempting to remove her off him which destroyed any imposing figure he created back in the hall of devils. Hey you the big breasted girl, you are Akano right? Help me get your king off me. Naruto yelled making said girl blink in surprise at the fact that he knew her name and that he was able to identify her as well. How do you know me? Akano couldn't help but ask, ha. Huh? Rias always talked about how jealous she was of a girl named Akano because she had bigger breasts than hers and yours are clearly are bigger than this brat over here and you are of the same age as her too, Naruto said without shame turning his face away when Rias tried rubbing her cheek with his, well she tried to rub her cheek with his only for his hand to get in the way as he continued trying to get her off him. Well. He also knew she was part of Rias' little group because he could feel Rias' devil essence on her but she didn't need to know that. What? I never said I was jealous of Akano. Rias almost immediately stopped what she was doing in order to yell at him with a scandalized expression and an embarrassed blush adorning her cheeks. She was not jealous of Akano one bit. Boobzilla, Kaneko said with a small frown putting her hands over her smaller breast instantly hating the fact they were talking about the size of Rias and Akano's boobs. Ahaha. 
Yuto could only laugh awkwardly with a sweat drop knowing that the chances of that being true were quite high. Era. Is there something you want to share with the rest of us bucko? Akano said with her amused smile growing even more in amusement with a dangerous glint in her eyes, the kind that said she was going to get teasing material out of this and was not going to hesitate to use against her king. I I do not. Rias tried to defend herself and much to her bad luck Naruto not only freed himself from her grasp but also continued by saying. Then I am guessing the cute girl is, Kaneko right? You always said how she was a cute lowly said girl felt her eye twitch and feel several tick marks forming on the top of her head, and I am guessing the pretty boy is the one called Yuto? I still don't see why you said he looked like a character straight from a yaoi anime whatever that means, Naruto finished making said boy gain tick marks just like the rook of the peerage though unlike the lowly of the peerage he was smiling pleasantly which probably was being used to hide his annoyance. Okay. I am sorry please don't say anything else. Rhea said covering his mouth when he was about to say something more this time regarding her rival. Never mess with a prank master, or did you forget who taught you how to prank you brother? Naruto licked her palm making her face go green and remove her hand almost immediately, putting a hand on his hip he walked up to Akano staring at her intensely with a serious expression making the girl get nervous at the attention of the superior creature, hum, so this is your queen then? Why yes, she is my queen and the first member of my peerage, Rias said with a twitching eyebrow watching in jealously how he poked Akino's cheeks followed by him pulling said cheeks and letting them go before moving to poke her sides getting a moan and a blush from said girl which only increased when he fondled one of her breasts for a few seconds while muttering something like ehh, they're real after all, completely ignoring the reactions of said girl who was starting to blush heavily. When he was done molesting Akano he nodded to himself when he came to a conclusion about the girl leaving the blushing mess that was Akano fall to the ground letting her breath heavily thanks to his molesting. His eyes shined when his eyes landed on Kaneko who felt a shiver run down her spine as soon as she saw the creepy stare he was giving her, so doing the smart thing she tried to run away only for luck to not be on her side as he teleported himself next to her before scooping her up in a hug rubbing his cheek with hers which made the girl melt into the affectionate touch and started purring with her cat ears revealing themselves. I is this normal? Yuto asked hiding behind Rias in order to avoid being the next one to be molested by Naruto. He didn't get an answer as Rias was surrounded by a red aura showing she was anything but happy with his actions. Why was her peerage getting this treatment while she couldn't hug him? Hum. So this Akano girl is a fallen angel then? She does have a seductive body like Rias described fallen angels have. I can also feel a different kind of dark feeling from her which is quite different from the devil feeling Rias and the rest of the devils let out, and this girl in my arms seems to have chakra eh? My. My didn't think anyone else would have chakra too so does it mean that the yukai race also posses chakra? I totally need to pay them a visit, Naruto thought to let go of Kaneko who came back to reality and ran off the hall with a red face straight to the bathroom. His affectionate touch had provoked an undesired effect on her. S-O-L-S-A-M-A, Rias said in a dangerous tone making her way to him with the same red aura of destruction surrounding her body. Sup brat, Naruto said completely ignoring the fact that she was more than ready to destroy him. Mind explaining why are you cheating already? Rias asked in a too sweet kind of tone making him blink in confusion. Cheating? Huh? I have no idea what are you talking about, Naruto said flatly before rubbing the top of her head with a grin, you can explain to me after I beat that bastard's ass. This made her get out of her enraged mode when she remembered exactly what was he supposed to be doing right now. Oh oh. Alright, then would you like me to tell you about Riser's powers and peerage? We already fought against them so. Nah. If you do that then it will be more boring, Naruto said yawning loudly making his way out of the room, make sure you watch the whole thing because today your fate will change, nothing is set in stone and it will never be, you are the one that decides your own future and it's up to you to decide the outcome. Saul Sama. Rias said softly holding the hand where his mark was at close to her chest watching how he turned around to give her a feral grin. Ill beat that idiot black and blue for you that you can be sure of, and also my real name is Naruto, so you better remember it. Ha. How do I always manage to get involved with idiots and perverts, Naruto sighed falling to the ground with a depressed aura surrounding him not caring that there were people watching and could hear everything he said or that he was being glared to death by his opponents who were quite offended by his comment. The moment his eyes landed on the kind of peerage riser had he couldn't help but think and assume the guy was a pervert, like seriously he only had girls on his peerage and all of them were the perfect example of what a harem would be like. How did he know how a harem was supposed to be conformed like? He had Jiraiya of all people as his sensei and godfather, not to mention he studied hard, in secret, to make the variations of the sexy jutsu like the reverse harem no jutsu so he was more than knowledgeable about the subject. 
B. Before we begin the match I want to ask your conditions for the duel then if both parties are good with it we can proceed with the match. Sirzex said stuttering at the start trying to compose himself from the odd behavior of the godlike dragon and if anyone noticed his stutter which they probably did, considering he was speaking through a loudspeaker that was resonating through the arena that Naruto and Riser were standing on, no one seemed to comment on it as they remained silent, and is there something you want as a reward for winning? Well besides the hand of my sister that is. Huh. Naruto blinked in confusion when he heard that last part but instead of voicing his confusion he just shrugged it off thinking he was just hearing things. Let's begin with you Aurelian Sama, is there anything in particular you wish? Hum. There is hardly anything you can offer me that I cannot create with my powers but let's see, some food could be nice, but that feels too little for all this, oh. Wait I have an idea, Naruto said all of a sudden smashing his fist on top of his hand with a light bulb appearing next to him, which no one understood how that was possible, which disappeared after a few short as a huge grin appeared on his face that stretched so far that it almost felt unreal to the eye. One that made shivers run down everyone's backs, if I win I want my own evil set and I want this idiot to owe me a wish but if he wins I will not only become his loyal servant but also grant him power beyond his imagination sounds about right don't you think so? He is free to use every tactic he can think of, I don't care as long as he makes this fun, he can turn into a chicken for all I care. What? He can do that. Everyone in the crowd of devils yelled when they heard this, not believing that a being as powerful as him wanted so little in exchange for granting someone powers that only a dragon god could give, if he could truly do such a thing and grant riser power like that then this would benefit the devil race greatly and they wouldn't hesitate to offer the young devil several marriage offers. A power granted by a dragon god was something out of this world. Oh oh. T then riser kun are you okay with this terms? Sirzex asked trying his best to maintain his composure. V very cough very well. I accept the terms and I will make you regret becoming my servant you beast, Riser yelled glaring at the figure of Naruto with his peerage doing the same thing as him to try and keep some face, clearly, his answer made everyone in the hall yell and cheer loudly approving of the actions of the younger devil. Since both sides are okay with the terms set we can now begin, Sirzex yelled but as soon as he did everyone started yelling supporting the phoenix with Rias and her group cheering for Naruto. Mira. Take him out. Riser yelled getting a shaky nod from the blue-haired girl who hesitated for a second before launching herself in his way with her weapon ready to strike, unlike her king she was aware that the being in front of them was out of their reach but orders were orders so she had no choice but to swallow her fear. As soon as she got within range she was instantly knocked out by a golden blur that only a few were able to see that ended up hitting the top of her head sending her crashing to the ground and shortly she disappeared from the stage as she was unable to fight. One pawn of Riser Phoenix has been eliminated. Whoops, my bad. Naruto said scratching the back of his head with a sheepish smile, he had unconsciously used his tail when he felt something coming his way at high speeds. Bastard, Ni, nee, Lee, Eel and Nell attacking him on the sides. Riser growled sending the pair of twins to attack him on the sides. Naruto instead of using his tail or moving at all just watched the pairs of twins get close to his position with their fist and chainsaws pushing forward fully intended on hitting him only for their attacks to not do anything as they were blocked by his wings making the catgirls hold their fists in pain as they felt like they had tried to punch through a thick wall made of the hardest metal in the underworld. And it was believable as the chainsaws that were covered in flames were doing nothing more than creating sparks when they came in contact with the wings dulling the blades the more they tried to grind through them. Hum. So my wings and tail are just as powerful and flexible as my full dragon transformation, interesting, Naruto thought rubbing his chin before he stabbed all four of them on the sides with the tip of his tail so fast they had no chance to dodge, as soon as his tail made contact with their bodies they were transported to the safe zone as he had pierced through them with his tail like a hot knife through butter. It did help he covered his tail with a non-lethal poison so they would be paralyzed for a while now. Four pawns of riser phoenix have been eliminated. Oi! Start taking this seriously idiot. This is just getting sad. Naruto yelled with his eyes turned into white saucers and several tick marks appearing all over the top of his head with full intentions of provoking him. That and at this rate he was barely going to see what dragon powers he retained in his dragon human form if the devil didn't take this seriously. Well, I guess it's my turn to make the first move, Naruto said with the same feral grin appearing on his face which didn't last long as he opened his mouth enough to let a concentrated ball of starfire manifest. Soon a massive beam of the same starfire they saw earlier was shot out of his mouth heading in the direction. Everyone mauve boom. The place where they were previously standing exploded in a huge dome of beautiful fire that disintegrated the chess kingpiece structure that Riser was standing on top of reducing it to nothing more than ashes in a huge crater. Ho! 
so he managed to survive that along with a few of his slaves. Maybe he isn't as trash as he looks like, Naruto said with an impressed tone as he had honestly not expected Riser to react fast enough to dodge the beam of fire. Then again, the beam was smaller and slower than when he was in his dragon form, so maybe it played a factor in it. Three pawns and one bishop of Riser Phoenix have been eliminated. He couldn't say the same about the rest of Riser Pawns and the black haired bishop as they weren't lucky enough to survive the blast and were eliminated from the battle. Well, there goes another thing I can use even if it's downgraded a lot, Naruto thought doing a mental check on the things he wanted to try or at least a few of them. He didn't have to wait long before Riser did another move by sending his knights to attack him both of them at once. Instead of trying to block it with his wings he decided to dodge to the side to avoid being hit by the massive sword that the black haired girl Cyrus had. I got you. The other knight Carlamine yelled jumping behind him with her sword ready to cut his back only for him to grab the sword with the palm of his hand. However, his hand wasn't human looking anymore as it had changed back to its dragonic form with black and white lightning giving the claw a menacing appearance which was enhanced by the glare he was giving her. Wah she didn't get a chance to react as her sword was destroyed when he gripped his claw slightly completely destroying it and successfully making her weaponless, without a single moment of hesitation he slashed at her with his clawed hand forcing her back to the safe zone and out of combat. One knight of Riser Phoenix has been eliminated. Unknown to most people dragon claws are one of the most powerful parts of a dragon so the chances of her surviving a direct hit from lightning clad claw were low or more like the chances were non-existent. Carla, you bastard you will pay for that, Cyrus yelled in rage ignoring the yelling of Riser as she attempted to slash at Naruto only for her to miss every time as he just moved to the side with the same amused smile on his face, stay still you fucking lizard. Oh darling, why would I do such a thing? Naruto muttered on her ear before grabbing her by the shoulder lifting her with little to no problem with sword and everything before slamming her on the floor hard enough for her grip on the weapon to disappear and for her to lose her breath. He followed up by kicking her in the ribs in a similar fashion someone would kick a dog gently to get him off him. Thought his kind kick was enough to send her flying through a rook structure knocking her out as well and lucky for her she was transported away before the structure fell on top of her. One night of riser Phoenix has been eliminated. This is already getting boring, Naruto thought dully when he saw how easy he knocked out the last of the knights. He knew that he wouldn't even need to try in order to defeat the rooks as he really doubts that they could create enough physical strength to make him flinch at all. Seriously, how did Rias Peerage lost to Riser? They were not only really damn weak but they were so unorganized as a team that it was ridiculous, even he had a better team fighting when he was a genin than they did. He was so going to let Rias get a piece of his mind later. Bushu are you okay? Akino asked in concern when she saw her king shiver all of the sudden and started hugging herself for reasons that escaped her. Why yeah, I am okay, Rias said with a forced smile which didn't seem to completely believe her but just opted for letting it go. Seen this Rias sighed in relief before focusing on Naruto who was staring at Riser's remaining peerage with a bored look. Why do I feel like I am trouble? Rias thought hoping that she was wrong because the last time she made Naruto mad she was forced to train to the bone until she got to an acceptable level and even then she got no love from it. It was torture, still, to think he was this strong, he is barely trying at this point, Sona said pushing her glasses up with a calculating gaze, well not like it was really necessary as you could see that his title as dragon god was not for show and the difference between them was too much. The difference in power is overwhelming. He is not even giving them a chance to use Riser's tears to heal with how merciless he is beating them up ufufu, Akino said with a glazed look making everyone around her sweat drop knowing exactly why was she enjoying this. At this rate is only a matter of time before Riser is defeated, Yudo said with a serious look on his face concentrating on the fight as much as possible, Naruto's moves were too fast and precise which showed he had experience fighting in human form as he could hardly see any openings in his defense and the few he saw he knew it was nothing more than a bait for the enemy. He was fast, strong enough to send a person flying with a kick, not to mention his magical and dragonic powers were overwhelming. Truly a monster, strong, Kaneko said watching the pile of rubble where Cyrus was kicked at. It had to be a really powerful kick if he managed to destroy something of that size by throwing someone through it more so considering those chess pieces were made with the magic of Sirzex and the strongest Queen Graphia. Oi fuck face, why don't you give up already if you aren't going to try at all? Naruto yelled with a mocking tone making Riser grit his teeth in anger. How is he this strong? Is it because he is a dragon? This is bad at this rate Il Yubeluna. Isabella, Shwelen, go all out on him I don't care what you do just take him out no matter what. 
Riser yelled gripping his fists so hard his knuckles turned white. Oh Onisama, Ravel muttered seeing the look on her brother's face. He was starting to lose himself to his anger to the point he didn't seem to care about giving his pieces proper instructions as he just ended up sending all of them to their death or defeat in this case. Her brother hated being mocked by others it probably had to do something with their older brother as Riser and Ruval were constantly being compared to each other but even she knew the difference between them was too much to even mention as it was clear that Ruval was the better of the two. Ravel wasn't stupid like her brother, she knew that it was only a matter of minutes or seconds before they lost as she was not delusional like her brother who thought he could oppose a dragon god of all thing, s. Hell, even a dragon would be too much for them. Dragons were supposed to be on at the top of the food chain as the ultimate predator, the strongest beings in the world were dragons after all. Ha, huh, this again, seriously, how did Rias Naruto block a kick from Shuelan with his forearm followed by grabbing her ankle with his left arm to pull her closer to him forcing her to lose her balance and without letting her react he used his right forearm to hit her straight in the throat in a similar fashion to Killer B's lariat pushing her to the ground. She seemed to recover quickly from it and she tried to hit him with kicks only a real martial artist could perform but all of them were successfully blocked by him much to her frustration. This girl has really nice legs, Naruto hummed blocking a kick that was aimed at the side of his head with an appreciating look, he didn't mean anything pervert from it as he was only appreciating the fact that she was an actual martial artist as he could see the girl actually trained in them and it was shown by the lean muscles her legs had which could only be archived through training. Too bad her potential was being wasted by being on Riser's peerage. Kicking her on the stomach he pushed her away from him which put her on her knees as he had forced the air out of her lungs, without a single moment of hesitation he walked up to her and grabbed her by the hair forcing her to look up only for a fist to meet her face and it didn't stop there as the same fist went straight to her stomach right after. This pattern continued for a few more times before he punched her one last time hard enough she rolled back. Shit. His punches are so heavy I felt like I was being hit by a truck, Shuelan thought holding her head with one hand noticing she was bleeding when she felt a wet sensation on the spot her hand touched. She was a martial artist but right now she would very much appreciate if he held back a little because she was a girl. Screw her pride as a warrior, she didn't give a shit if she was disrespected by him holding back a lot more if it meant not having to receive hits like that. Shuelan visible flinched when she heard his steps growing closer to her position and when she lifted her face to look at him she saw him standing in front of her. Tell me, darling, why do you fight for someone like Riser? You clearly have the potential to become a great martial artist and much more yet you bound yourself to that devil. Naruto asked bending down low enough to rest his arm on top of his leg so he could rest his cheek over his palm and meet her eye to eye. S shut, up, you don't know Riser sama like we do. The girl glared at him struggling to stand up getting a sigh from him. I wonder what he did to get all of you to pledge your loyalty to him. Oh well, not my business, Naruto said standing up from his position shrugging his shoulders, shame your potential will be wasted girl, Naruto continued lifting his hand creating a sphere on his hand similar to a newborn star or to some it may look like a small galaxy made of fire which started to increase in size until it was big enough to be compared to the same size of his Odama Rasengan the same size as when he fought pain. I would have loved to nurture your talent but fools will always be fools, Naruto said making the girl close her eyes in instinct knowing there was nothing she could do. Or so was the plan. Naruto was forced to move his wings in order to cover him from the explosion spell that fell down from the sky with full intentions of hitting him, thanks to this the other rook of Riser got the chance to grab Shuelan away from him jumping a few meters away from him. Shuelan, are you okay? Isabella asked supporting her fellow rook who was struggling to stay on her feet and would have fallen down if it wasn't because she was holding her up. N no cough that bastard hits really hard, shit, Shuelan said holding her stomach in pain feeling the phantom pain from the punches she took earlier. Here take this, we need you if we want to have a chance to take this bastard down, Isabella took off the phoenix tears she had saved and gave them to Shuelan see as hers were destroyed during the fight with Naruto, well you can't even call it fight with how one-sided it was. What kind of pervert designed those clothes for all of you, Naruto deadpanned waving his wings to clear the smoke that the explosion made feeling annoyance build up inside of him when he noticed that these two new girls also had a really revealing outfit very much like the other catgirls he took earlier. Seriously, was he reborn in a perverted world? And here he thought that Rias having big breast as a child was weird enough, but no, now all the females or most of the ones he met had huge breasts and revealing outfits with figures to kill it. Maybe Aero Senen was cursing him or in the perv's point of view and words, he was blessing him right now. Thanks, Isabella I owe you one, 
After this is done I'll treat you a drink, Shuelin said jumping on her feet trying to get the feeling of her body back. Dia, oh talking about drinks are we? You should let this dragon in, I haven't had anything to drink in years, Naruto said behind them making their eyes widen in shock and jumped back when they saw he had teleported himself right behind them in less than a second. Don't you girls know it's rude to run away when someone is talking to you? Naruto yelled with a feral grin making a sweeping move with his hand before closing his fist making a projection of a huge dragon claw appear out of nowhere grabbing both of the girls getting a yelp and a kaya. From them holding them in a tight grip. He tightened the grip he had on them when he saw the big breasted girl that was in the sky tried to throw another explosion his way, this obviously had the effect of making both girls scream in pain which made the queen of riser phoenix stop her spell midway making his grin widen in size. He said these girls aren't as bad as I thought. Naruto mentally chuckled glad that they weren't as bad as he imagined, though it did make him feel somewhat bad for beating them up. They still had good in them if the pain of a fellow peerage member made them hesitate on attacking, after all, someone evil wouldn't doubt it. Huh, wouldn't that make Sasuke evil in a way with how he didn't hesitate to stab Sakura or that Karen girl? Ugh, I swear Sasuke always likes to make my life harder than it is, Naruto thought with a twitching eyebrow feeling a headache. Look, Girl I am already hella bored of dealing with you idiots and I am so fucking hungry I could eat a whole hydra so just give up, well unless of course, you don't care about these girls, Naruto said making his hold even tighter than before which had the desired effect of getting them to scream, successfully making the bomb queen flinch and grit her teeth as her moral lowered considerably. He did feel dirty doing stuff like this but he was a fucking ninja. He was allowed to play dirty. I, I. Yubeluna looked back and forth between the girls and Naruto with a conflicted look in her eyes. Well, what is it going to be? Your friends or your loyalty to your king? Naruto asked with an annoyed tone, not because she was taking her time answer but because his stomach growled loud enough for him to hear it. Seriously, he is fucking dying of hunger here. I am sorry Shuelin, Isabella, Yubeluna said before smiling cruelly summoning a magic circle on top of them of huge proportions Riser Sama's orders are absolute. Don't tell me she is going to. Naruto couldn't finish his train of thoughts as the whole area they were standing on exploded engulfing the whole area in a bright light. No, Saul Sama. Rias yelled in shock losing all the strength in her legs when she saw the whole area he was standing get destroyed with a powerful magic spell that Yubiluna was preparing while he was threatening her with her peerage camarades or harem sisters in this case. Bushu. All three of Rhea's present members said when they saw the look of pure shock in their king's face when she saw the one that was supposed to be her last hope get a direct hit of the explosion one of a greater magnitude than the one Akino took during the raiding game. Ha! Huh, always quick to jump the gun, do you really believe that an attack of that level can hurt a dragon a dragon god of all things? Sona asked the obvious question with a dull look that made said girl blink in confusion, ha! Huh. Just keep looking Rias, Sona continued shaking her head with another sigh not believing her friend was for real. Two rooks and one queen of Riser Phoenix have been eliminated. My, my, I was almost fooled by her acting skills, Naruto whistled from his position on the air which was similar to one sitting on a throne with a leg crossed on top of the other and both of his arms calmly resting behind his head enjoying the destruction the queen of Riser left by pretty much sacrificing herself and her friends or peerage members. Well, she didn't really sacrifice herself as he had swapped places with her while leaving behind the two girls he had taken as hostages. Just because he thought there was hope for them didn't mean he was going to get his ass burnt for them. Fuck that, seriously, how did Rias lose to these idiots when they had a queen that just suicided for no reason and the king had the strategies of an amateur who hasn't experienced real combat? When this was over he was so getting Rias to train and have actual fighting experience, he was so freaking sure that all Rias did was training without actually fighting anyone. In the hall, Rias sneezed all of the sudden without a logical explanation getting a concerned look from everyone around her. Well whatever let's get done with this so I can eat something, I hope they have ramen here, it feels like forever since I had a true meal, Naruto thought jumping out of his invisible seat slowly levitating down to the ground close to where Riser and a blonde haired girl were standing with the former having an enraged expression while the latter had a shocked look on her face. Well Riser, now that you stopped hiding behind the skirts of your peerage are you going to fight me like a man? Or are you going to keep hiding like a coward? Naruto grinned at the enraged Phoenix with his arms crossed in front of his chest. You, not only do you dare interrupt one of the most important moments in Devil's history but also dare mock me? Riser Phoenix. The young Phoenix yelled letting his wings expand almost as if they were emulating his rage. 
Riser didn't think twice about throwing himself with his punch cocked back only extending it forward when it was fully covered in flames and within rage with full intentions of punching him in the face only for it to be blocked by Naruto's palm who had a disappointed look on his face. Is this how I used to be when I first fought Kakashi? Yikes, now I feel embarrassed, Naruto thought twisting Riser's right arm to the right making his knees start to bend over slowly. Let me go Raiga. Not giving the arrogant Phoenix a chance to finish Naruto punched him in the nose making him roll back a couple of meters thanks to the force he ended up putting in the punch. Oni-sama, the remaining member of his peerage, in other words, the younger sister of Riser Phoenix yelled rushing back to her brother's side in a hurry only to stop by her brother who was holding his face in pain glaring at Naruto with eyes full of hatred. Hum, I wonder what kind of limitations we were given in here. Well not like it matters since you can regenerate back right. Then allow me to gracefully beat the shit out of you and test the limits of your regeneration, Naruto said making both of his hands into their claw forms with the same black and white lightning escaping both claws. You bastard, don't think that just because you got a hit on me you can. Naruto once again like the asshole he was didn't give Riser a chance to finish once again by literally cutting him in half with a single wave of his claws completely severing his lower body from the upper body in a clean cut and he was sure that if it wasn't because of his regeneration he would have surely died. Ah, Riser screamed as his body reconnected itself back with the flames of his clan quickly closing and healing any kind of damage he took in a matter of seconds, while it was true that his regeneration was good it didn't mean he was safe from the pain that came with the damage he took and considering his pain tolerance was quite low thanks to the lack of times he had taken actual damage. Oi, oi, this really isn't the best you can do right. Otherwise, this will be incredibly disappointing, walking up to Riser. Naruto grabbed him by the arm forcing him up from the ground with no problems as the remaining member of Riser's peerage could only look away from the scene knowing that she couldn't do anything even if she wanted to. That didn't stop him from kneeing him in the face so hard that everyone watching heard the noise of his nose breaking, without having a chance to scream he found his face paralyzed as Naruto coated his claws with poison digging his nails into his face so he couldn't heal himself from the paralysis even if it was only for a short time. Throwing the guy up like a rag doll he grabbed him by his ankle before slamming him face first with the ground. How much damage should I do to your face before you start taking permanent damage, Naruto rubbed his chin letting go of the ankle he was holding and proceeded to turn him around with the tip of his shoe so he was facing up instead he did this in order to grab him by the neck so that he could glare at him with a hateful look one of pure rage that could freeze the flames of hell if he very much wanted to as Naruto stopped playing around and allowed his real emotions for the phoenix surface. Tell me, Riser, do you know how much you tormented Rias? Naruto asked, yet he gave no room for an answer as he punched the ground next to Riser's head so hard it went through the ground, how much pain you made her feel for years. Pulling the fist that was inside of the ground he punched again this time aiming at his jaw breaking it in the process watching with indifference how it healed with the flames of a phoenix in a matter of seconds. How much tears she cried. Naruto punched his face again. How much she started to hate her parents because of you. Again, he punched, how many nightmares your mere name and presence gave her when she was nothing more than a seven-year-old girl. This time he went straight for the nose, how you destroyed her hopes and dreams. Again, how, and again he punched putting more force this time. Much, he continued ignoring the blood covering his arms. She, he went straight for the nose making the phoenix start to feel lightheaded. Felt. He didn't care his arms were being licked by the flames that Riser was creating every time he regenerated and in a weak attempt to free himself from the beating he tried to increase the heat of the flames only to lose concentration with each heavy punch he received. Unloved and alone, Naruto finished by interlacing his fingers smashing both of his hands together hitting him one last time so hard that the ground underneath them gave in and turned into a crater successfully. And be glad I am being merciful enough to not kill you. Naruto growled trying his best to get a hold of his anger lifting himself up from his position and start walking out of the crater not bothering to look back knowing that if he did he would lose what little control he had in him and actually kill the phoenix showing the rest of the devils that something like immortality was nothing more than a fluke. Comma, 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 everyone in the hall stared in silence, some of them gulping at the brutal scene they just witnessed. Rias' parents felt their hearts clench when they heard this and turned to Rias' direction for confirmation but they were ignored as Rias only collapsed on her knees covering her crying face with her hands feeling like a huge was finally lifted off her shoulders, if anything it felt like Naruto was offering her his hand in return with that same smile she had seen so many times when he was in his dragon form. One that filled her heart with warmth. Our riser Phoenix is completely knocked out. 
The winner is Orly and Sal Sama. She didn't care about what her parents wanted from her. She didn't care if they felt bad for doing what they did. She did not care if they wanted to make it up to her. I will stop here and thanks for watching.